Good morning you wee bastards and welcome to another video with Koala. Today we're going out to a military demonstration I've been invited to in the north of Adelaide. That's why the warrior video is taking so long, I still actually have to edit that, I'm not actually home right now. However, as you guys see this, you will have already seen the warrior video. Man, YouTube is weird sometimes. So there's going to be some really exciting things, some live fire demonstrations, some military vehicles, all modern stuff in the Australian Defence Force. It's going to be absolutely epic. It's going to be a hell of a long drive though, so I smell a montage coming. <laughs> And this is about where I cut in. I hope you have enjoyed this little driving montage through the Australian countryside. As we got to Port Wakefield, the first thing we were greeted with was a 155mm M1 howitzer. Comment below if you know the nickname for this thing. So we're finally here after what seemed like about a three hour drive. Actually it was a three hour drive through the Australian countryside. The first thing we're greeted with is a Leopard AS1. God, this is going to be a good day. We first had to get on a bus to go to the demonstration proper. The first thing we saw was these military work vehicles. I kind of had my hopes down a little bit that there might not be too much that was actually, you know, tank based here. I hadn't known what to expect on the way out here. But a little while later we ended up seeing a LAV-25, or the Australian variant of it known as the ASLAV. This was definitely my favourite of all the vehicles here, but there's plenty more to take a look at, so before we poke around inside this thing, let's go see what else is here. This is an Australian made Bushmaster PMV, an armoured personnel carrier worth 500 grand a pop that I got to have a good look around. I just had to have a look outside, these vehicles were practically fully functional, just ripped straight from the battlefield and placed here for an exhibition. These things are also in service with many other nations including Japan, Britain and the Netherlands. So this is the 7.62mm uh, machine gun mount right here, in front of the APC, not much room in these things. I guess it's not really what you need it for. You can see the, the striker over there. Nice. Uh, six foot, you don't really fit in those things. Oh, that was cool. Looks amazing. Now it was time for the M777 Howitzer live fire demonstration. Hearing protection seemed to me like a pretty good sign. Whoa, check out that delay. The M777 is a relatively new 155mm howitzer developed by the United Kingdom but also in service with many other nations including the US and Australia. Now check out this landmine. <laughs> After that, how could I resist heading straight back to the Aslav? I apologise for calling it a striker earlier, it is not. This is the Aslav Type 1, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, an amphibious infantry fighting vehicle in service with the Australian Defence Force since 1995. This is primarily used as a reconnaissance vehicle due to its minimal armour and will soon be replaced by the German Boxer and or Lynx fighting vehicles. It should be noted, however, that the armour is thick enough to stop all small arms fire, including AK-74 rounds, and the eight-wheeled vehicle is capable of driving even with all eight wheels being punctured. Weighing just a hair over 13 tonnes, the Aslav's 275 horsepower diesel engine can get the vehicle to 100 kilometres per hour. These cost 2.2 million Australian dollars a pop and looking in the back doors, which look remarkably similar to the Soviet BMP, you can see seating for six fully armed infantrymen. However, I have no idea how they fit in there with all their equipment. Yeah. I don't even know how you get in there. I don't think I'm going to fit. I don't know if anybody actually wanted to see the Scottish Koala Snorri camp, but there you go. This is me trying to get into the two-man turret of the Aslav, and as you can see, it's an extremely tight squeeze. How fully armed soldiers manage this on a daily basis, I will never know, and it was well worth it to see inside this turret. 
As well as the main armament, this M242 Bushmaster 25mm chain gun, the Aslav also mounts one coaxial and one turreted 7.62mm machine gun. In America, these fire depleted uranium shells, but Australia does not use them, opting for tungsten instead. Inside the turret, there is also plenty of sensory equipment for surveillance work. Sitting in the uh, Aslav's driver's seat, I'll tell you the one thing the driver can do with the hatch closed is see where he's going. This is the view you get through the optics. That's the uh, camouflage there. It's not a lot. <laughs> Quite a rare look inside a LAV25 or ASLAV, this is now back in the Bushmaster PMV and before we headed off I ended up finding this, a modified Toyota Land Cruiser with a 106mm recoilless rifle. This is an old naval destroyer turret, one of the few displays permanently here at the site. Of course I couldn't resist going up the ASLAV's turret one last time and ended up with an awful problem but we'll get into that in a moment. Check out this awesome edited photo I ended up taking of the muzzle of the 25mm chain gun. This photo I got in front of the Leopard AS1 was back out the front of the site a couple of kilometres away but we could still very clearly hear the M777 howitzers firing. Before we went to visit some Swiss friends of ours just a half an hour away, had a couple of glasses of this, a traditional Swiss alcoholic summer drink known as Hogo, which is champagne mixed with elderberry wine, mint, lemon and tonic water on top. It is absolutely delicious, I've become addicted to this stuff, I bet Napalm will be jealous of me. Well, that was a pretty amazing day. Not every day you get to see inside a LAV25 or an ASLAV. It was a lot of driving, but I think it was worth it. I mean, the Australian countryside can be a good thing to look at sometimes, make for some nice scenery. Seeing inside the Bushmaster PMV and especially the ASLAV makes me... Oh, almost makes me wish I was part of the army. If there's one job I could do in the military, it would be to be a crew member of an armoured fighting vehicle or an infantry fighting vehicle. They are so cool and being able to poke around inside it, well, that was a privilege. Now, funny story, the hatch that leads into the driver's compartment of the Aslav is quite small and I'm six foot. And trying to get in and out was not, <laughs> did not work so well, so much so that when I was trying to get out of the driver's seat, I tore a hole in my pants. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, I was trying to get out, I was clambering my way out, my feet were up, like my knees were up by my chin, trying to clamber out this vehicle, out the driver's hatch and... Yep, rip. It sounded like Velcro, and there was a massive gaping hole in my trousers. <laughs> oh, it was awful the rest of the day. I just spent, like, trying to hide the fact that I tore a hole in my pants. It was the most embarrassing thing. I bet all the military guys went home and had a good laugh about that. Uh, you got to see the funny side. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you lads have enjoyed as much as I have. It's been a lot of fun going around taking a look at all these vehicles, as well as, of course, the M777 Howitzer, the mine. There was a 40mm grenade launcher, but I missed it. I, I watched the launcher, but my phone is, is not good enough quality. You can't actually see the grenade flying, and the actual explosion itself, well, it was a flashbang, so not quite explosion, but you know what I mean. I just missed it, which is really unfortunate. I do apologize for the relatively poor quality of the audio from the microphone and the visuals from my phone's camera. It's not the best quality. I'd love to get some better quality gear to record kind of IRL videos. If you did like this style of video, make sure to let me know. I haven't done one of these in a very long time. So to all the new subscribers who've never seen my ugly mug before, hi, how are you going? <laughs> If this is your first time seeing the channel, thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy and leave a like if you did. Hit that subscribe button as we're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And I really think we can do it, so let's just see if it's possible. It's going to be a stretch. I do have a public Twitter, Instagram and Discord server which you guys should all come and join if you haven't already. And if you have any personal experience with any of the machinery and vehicles I've displayed in this video, I would love to hear about it. There's nothing I enjoy more than reading those comments. Anyway lads, next video, as I upload this, because I will have uploaded the Warrior video yesterday, but I actually still haven't done that. Next video is going to be the Challenger 1 video, which you guys have been requesting for a long time. So, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it, I'm not giving up on those types of videos, I'm getting to it soon. Anyway lads, always remember, keep your bagpipes to hand and your kilt on so you don't rip a hole in your pants. And I will see you in the next one.